What's up y'all? Today, we're gonna to be taking a walk around our Sile X5. Now, previously we did a video where we did a walk around on our Sile X7. We even did a machining video where we machined Monel K500. So if you're interested, check out those videos. But today we're specifically gonna be looking at the X5. We're gonna go on the inside, maybe do some tool changes so you can see all of that, run the machine around so you can see the feeds and the rapids, and we're even gonna go through the control. But first, let's take a walk around the machine and check out some of its features. We are the national distributor for these machines. And I can tell you from the short time that we've been the distributor for these machines, we've been selling machines to some amazing people. We are super excited and humbled to be a part of that. And if you guys got any questions about these machines, feel free to contact us. We've been helping a lot of people already and we are eager to help you guys as well. So right here on the side, you just got the same as the X7. On both sides, you got the removable window so you can get inside the machine, but you change the tools on this side of the machine. And we're gonna look at that later. Moving on around, we've got the same transformer like on the X7. Now this is gonna take you from 380 to 220, 460, whatever your shop runs, this transformer will be able to get you there. Now we move on back. Of course, you got your main power switch here. Now, unlike the X7 where the coolant and the chips drain down the front, this one comes through the back. Now, I do want to correct something that I said on that X7 walk around video, and that is in that video, I said that the coolant comes out the back right here and drains into your tank. That's obviously incorrect, so sorry for that, but it actually comes out through the front. So back to the X5, this one, the coolant, everything comes out the back here into these removable trays. Now, if these start filling up with chips, all you gotta do is lift this off, dump it into your hopper, whatever you have for your chips, and replace it. So you got your coolant pump here and your coolant tank underneath. Coming on around, you've got your air inlet here. So this is where your shop air connects. And then you got your output here for your air gun. Now we have replaced our air gun with a different hose because we wanted a quarter inch fitting with our quick connect. That way we can put our European connection on for our Vero S system. So coming around the front, got your double doors, you got your control, obviously. So we're gonna hit our auxiliary three button, open the door. I'll home it out over here on X so we can kind of see. So we got our TTC 200 tool setter, the same as the X7, and it's on a riser. As you can see, our vice is also on our Vero S zero point system. And that's mainly because if we run this down with our hand wheel, and I have a tool in the spindle, but you can see that right there is alarmed out in our Z axis. So that is as close to the table as we can get with our spindle. So you're gonna have to use long tools or you're gonna have to build your fixture system up off the table so you can reach it, which is no big deal. The Vero S system is great because we can locate our fixtures one after another, no matter what we put in, quick and easy. And just so you guys know, on our store right now, the Vero S system is on sale for a huge discount. So if you're interested in a system like this, check out our store at titansandcnc.com. Now this machine has a 20,000 RPM spindle that is direct drive as well as a bonnet style ATC. So this is a 16 tool tool changer. Now you notice you don't have a button to be able to put the tool directly into the spindle. So I'll show you how to do that now. So if I'm just gonna home this out, I'm gonna home it up in Z, we'll go back around the side over here. We're just gonna pop this panel off. A couple quarter turns, panel pops right off. We'll grab our tool. Now you'll notice here on this side of the machine, you have this little cutout here and that is specifically to put your tool straight into the ATC. Now, since it's BT30, you don't have to worry about which direction you put it in. And if you want to take it out, you just grab it, pull it right out. So speaking of tools, why don't we go ahead and do a couple tool changes so you guys can see the functionality of this and how fast it is. So we're on tool nine, let's go to tool 10 right next to it. Pretty good. So now let's go to tool two, which is right straight above it. Tool two. So it's pretty quick. 
One thing to note with this type of tool changer is it's not randomized. It's gonna be the same every time. Unlike the side mount ATC of the X7, which is randomized. Now, another thing to note is in your programs, you don't need to stage tools, okay? You will crash your machine. So if it sees a tool command, it's going to change the tool. So that's how this bonnet style ATC works. So now let's just take a look at our control here. Now, you can see we're running the Syntec 22MA, same as the X7. And we do have the same keys here, but our keyboard is a little bit condensed because we don't have the real estate that the X7 has. Now, moving on down, over here on our modes, we have the same as any other machine. We have home, MDI mode, auto, jog, incremental jog, and MPG, manual pulse generator, which is your hand wheel. Over here, we've got your spindle stop, clockwise, counterclockwise, spindle orientation, uh, single block, optional skip, optional stop, and manual pulse generator simulation. Now, this is something I haven't gone over yet that's really cool. If you're scared of an operation, even like the tool setter, you can turn this on and perform the function, and then it activates your hand wheel where you can step through the process using the hand wheel. So that's really cool. We'll go through that in a different video, but that's a pretty neat button. Now on down, we've got our jog functions here, your Z, Y, X, whatever axis, your rapid mode. Aux three, which is auxiliary three, that's how you open and close the door. And these buttons you're not really gonna use much at this time. Uh, that's if you kind of get hung up and you need service. Uh, these do a little bit different things there. But over here you got your, your air, your coolant button, your light, aux one and aux two. So down here, you got your override knobs, you got your feed override, spindle override, and rapid override. Of course, you got your power on, power off, feed hold, cycle start, and of course, your emergency stop button. So that's an overview of the hard keys on our panel. Now let's take a look at our control screen. So if we hit our over arrow here, we see the same menus along the bottom as we have on the X7. The only difference is we don't have that giant monitor. So where we have menus along the bottom and the side on the X7, we only have them on the bottom. But this has all the same functionality as the X7 does. You just may have to hit an over arrow like this in order to see more menus. So if we go back, the first screen we're gonna see is our coordinate screen or our information screen. That's gonna tell you where the machine is sitting in the machine coordinates and your work offset. So if we go back here to the next, we have our program screen. Now this is where you make edits to your program, whatever program is actively called up, you're gonna see that on the screen. And you can also go to your file manager. This is where all of your files are stored. And this is where you would go to bring files off of your USB drive, which is right here if you've got that method that you're using to get programs to your machine. So we got two drives here we can use. You'll bring them right into this screen here call it up and you will see this program screen here for to make edits. Now from there, we can go over to the offsets. Here's your offset screen. Now we're seeing our work offsets. And if I hit page up, you'll see that we have 100 work offsets, just like the X7. This is standard. This is not an option that you purchase extra. This is standard on the machine already. Now if we go over to tool set, Here's your tool offsets. And if we hit page up here, we actually have 200 tool offsets that you can use on this machine. The X7 has 96, if you remember. This one actually has 200, which is pretty amazing. That is also a standard option. Now you can do a tool change straight from your offset screen if you want, which is what we did a while ago. And we also have our tool setter button. And this is how you can go in and teach a tool if you've purchased the tool setter option. Now we're gonna come back here and we'll go back one more screen to see our different menus. We'll go to our monitor screen. Now this is where you run a program from. You can see a little bit of your code that you're running as well as some information at the top of what active G codes are active, your distance to go and your absolute position. This is the same info that you're seeing on the X7. 
Um, you can also, from this screen, is where you would go to MDI mode and run an MDI program. Uh, next, we can go to maintenance screen. Of course, that brings up some different menus. If you want to get into the PLCs or uh, if you want to back up your system, you want to see some alarms, if you have any alarms active or history on your alarms, that's where you would go to that screen and see. Uh, next, we got user parameters. This would take you straight to some of the parameters that you can change on your machine uh, in case you have to get in there and make any changes. You also have some diagnostics that you can get into. You can come over and see some more stuff here, uh, such as your macro variables. If you have uh, macro programming that you're doing, you can see those variables here. You can see your global variables from this diagnostic screen. So if we go back, we can see PLC status, see some of our switches that may be on or off. More than likely, you're not gonna be in there unless you have a problem. Uh, then your system admin button. This is where you actually have to put in a password in order to change some things inside of there. But that is all of your menus. Everything is very basic, very easy to get to, so nothing scary about it. Um, but now I've wrote a little simple program that we're actually gonna run. We wanna see this thing actually move the axes in rapid and feed, and it's gonna do a tool change and run the spindle up to 12,000 RPMs, then to 18,000 RPMs, so you guys can hear and see this thing actually move. So with my program called up, this is not actually called up to run. This is just me editing the program. In order to run it, I actually have to hit execute. So once I do that, it takes me to the monitor screen. Now I see the, the program that I'm actually running and I'm ready to run. For here, we're just gonna close our door. I'm gonna put it in auto mode and hit cycle start. That's gonna come up. It's gonna change the tool to tool nine. Now we're running 12,000 RPMs. You hear that? Super quiet. All right, so our first test, we're just gonna run it at 25% rapid, and it's just gonna move around the table so you can hear these axes and how it sounds when it moves, all right? Come down. Man, that's just so smooth. You don't even hear it moving. So we're gonna come in diagonally so you see both axes move. Now we're gonna ramp up to 18,000 RPMs. Man, listen, that's 18,000 RPMs, super quiet. All right, so our next move, we're gonna do that same traversing move but now we're gonna go at our max feed rate for the machine, which is 393 inches a minute, All right? So that's an actual feed move. That's not a rapid move, that is feeding. 393 inches a minute, as you see here on the screen. Now we're really gonna blow your mind here. We're gonna do that same move, except now we're gonna wrap it again but this time we're gonna go 100%. Watch how fast this machine is. 100%, here we go. <laughs> that dude is crazy how fast it is. That is insane for a machine at this price. All right, so that's the machine moving. You can hear how it sounds. We did some tool changes, give you an overview of the control, walk around of the machine. Now I know it's just moving things around and not really cutting anything. We put out a social on Instagram of us cutting some 1018 steel so you can actually see it cutting some material. So in our next video, we're gonna be cutting heat treated 4140 using our X5. Now we got some dynamic milling, some contouring, some drilling, and even some tapping with an M12 tap to see if this machine is gonna be able to pull it. So you wanna stay tuned for that video that's gonna be dropping pretty soon. Now guys, you may know we are the national distributors for these machines. So if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out because we can't wait to help you guys. It's already been so humbling to see and talk to all of these machinists who are now going out on their own because they found a legit machine 
at the price points that they can afford and ultimately bringing manufacturing back to the US using these style machines. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Check out these on our website at titansofcnc.com. We'll see you in the next one.